Welcome to Inside of the Pleasure Studio podcast, where we strip down truths and bear it all as we get real about all things sex, intimacy and relationships with oneself, another and the world around us, celebrating the joy of being fully alive and exploring what it means to live a life rich with passion. Every episode, we confront the conventional and break open the cages of censorship as we explore the untamed and often unspoken aspects of intimacy, cutting through the bullshit as we challenge sexual norms and provide you with the unvarnished truth about what it takes to have a fulfilling sex life. So if you're ready to dive into honest and very often provocative conversations that empower and enlighten, you've come to the right place. I am Melissa Louise your wild host, bringing to you fearless honesty on this unapologetic journey as we talk about sex, love and life in ways that are smart, fearless and fun. Because lover, this is not just about pleasure. It is a fucking revolution. Hello lovers, this is Melissa Louise, your absolute pleasure advocate erotic blueprint, sex, intimacy and relationship coach. And in this video, I am diving into your pleasure is your responsibility, part two. I really hope you implemented what I spoke about last week. How much fun. <laughs> I would love to know how you went, like, you know, send a, a reply email and share with me, you know, what you tried, what worked, what didn't work. And actually, this leads into a really fantastic way to look at our sexuality, our intimacy, our practices, coming together with someone else. It's all around information and curiosity. I have this uh, saying that I use all of the time, and it's not just my saying. Lots of people use it. They use it in many different arenas. But for me, I use it in the sacred sexuality world. And that is how we do something is how we do everything else. So I always say how we show up in life is actually how we show up in bed. So I invite you to think about that for a moment. If you show up in life staying meek, not standing up for your needs, not sharing, uh, staying silent and holding back and then getting angry and pissed off using passive aggressive moves, uh, sort of saying, oh, that doesn't really matter. If you want to do this, that's fine. I can, I just, it doesn't matter what I want to do. And you do that in your life and you do that in your workplace, you do that in your family, then that is how you're showing up in bed where someone else's needs are more important than yours. You're placing that. It's not necessary that they are saying that, that, you know, when we're engaging with someone else, we treat them how to, we teach them, not treat them. Hopefully we treat them. We teach them how to treat us. So when we're taking responsibility for our own pleasure, that means we have all of this incredible work to do. And it's not work, it's play. It can be work because how we show up in life is how we show up in bed. And if we have constructs that we need to move through, when we move through them in our intimate life, that is going to translate into our personal life, into our business life, into the way that we show up in our friendships. And the same way, the same thing is uh, true, the opposite way. So when we move through things in our business, when we move through things in the way that we operate in family, when we actually take a stand for our needs, when it comes to food, rest, uh, play, vacations, then we're actually going to become more of an advocate for our own selves in the bedroom. <laughs> so let's dive in to the ways that we can do that. Now, practice makes perfect in no matter what we do. If you do not know your own body, if you do not know, which is always shifting and changing as well, nothing is static. So if you do not know many different ways to explore oneself in pleasure, then how can you share that with someone else? When you engage with someone else, it is an invitation. And last week, I really spoke about the questions to ask when you're out on a date, when you are setting up your lovemaking container, when you, you can even say, you know, speak about those things when you're in the car. When you're in 
the whole touching game because it is life is like a video game life is a game <laughs> but when you're in the space where you are giving and receiving to a lover to your partner when we take the pressure off of p and v penis and vagina or penetration into the anus and we take penetration into an orifice off the table we are left with everything else i always say we are left with like 97 percent <laughs> of the game before we get into you know this act that many people deem as sex which is penetration yet the truth is sex is quite underwhelming for women in our current in our current narrative in our current culture sex is really underwhelming for women when sex is placed into the corner of uh penetration then that is actually more, unfortunately, in our current culture for men. They get something different wrapped around their cock that feels hot and beautiful and juicy and exciting, whereas the woman is often, unfortunately, many women don't have enough boundaries. They, uh, Their body becomes this place for the man to have more pleasure. Whilst, and this is not about violence this is not about uh i'm not talking about violence i'm not talking about uh men doing something to a woman that she believes she doesn't want we are raised to believe that that's what sex is and we are raised to believe that's what needs to happen many women believe that because they've been involved in heavy petting uh heavy petting the kissing and touching and you know, the, the lover is in their house and they're half naked, that therefore it needs to go that way. Um, yet the female body is often not brought to a place of deep pleasure where she's hungry for penetration. That is when a woman is ready. When is a woman ready for sex? Sorry, I've just overrid my own, my own wording boundary. When is a woman ready for penetration? is when she's begging for it, not just because the man is ready. And I'm speaking heterosexual relationships here. Just because someone is ready, and this is also penetration with fingers, okay? So if we're looking at all of that, if we're looking at that construct, our need is to know our own bodies. Now, for men, your need is to be able to understand your arousal so that it's not just at the time that you're entered into someone else's body that your arousal is now like beyond and, oh, my God, it feels so good. It's like your masturbation also needs to feel good. You need to understand how pleasure works through your body. Where does it move to? What type of pressure? What type of heat? What type of liquid? All of these things. And so for a woman, where does where in your body with certain touch elicits certain type of arousal, how long does it take? A woman doesn't take too long. A man doesn't take long enough. That's We have this narrative that women believe that they take too long. The fact that ejaculation happens often and then the question comes, did you come, is is just mind boggling when it comes to the female body, because if you don't know that she's come, then it's fairly obvious that she hasn't. And also when we look at the Taoist teachings and the tantric teaching teachings, which is about sex is designed for the female body to feel more. If a man has ejaculated and then needs to ask that of his lover, especially in, if it's, you know, if there's been penetration for three minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, then what's happening is you are getting, taking, having something, you're having pleasure with her body instead of your hand. That's what you do. You're replacing. And I know this feels, this, this is going to come across as really hard and harsh, but it needs to because we live in a culture that sells sex as something that women open their legs to while men get pleasure. We have the orgasm gap. We have um, many women say that, I can't have an orgasm without pen with penetration. Your body's designed to. <laughs> so the erogenous zones inside of a female's vagina is are so exquisite. 
and so in depth. That's why they call it her universe. Now, a woman who is in her own body, it is her responsibility to understand this, to have boundaries, to be the advocate for her body. And this is where we need to reparent ourselves and raise ourselves to make sure that we are advocating for our own pleasure. If you're here in my space, men and women, I'm going to speak to the men in a moment, a man doesn't get to enter your body unless he has spent at least half an hour, 45 minutes turning you on, unless he's asked you, how do you like to be touched? Does that work for you? Does this work for you? Share with me what works for you. If you're not being asked those questions, what the fuck are you doing opening your legs so that someone can come inside of you, can enter your body? Men, if you're approaching a woman's body, the fact that she is there kissing you, therefore, that is not, that's not, free entry into her body her body's not there for you to get off on her body's there for you to witness and experience absolute glory and yet most men are never given the chance to experience that glory so the questions that you need to be asking are the questions that allow her to share with you. Now, if a woman, if you're with a, a woman and you're asking her to share with me how to turn me on and she's not sharing and she's not giving you information, then that is your absolute uh, sign to slow down, to stop and, and make a beautiful boundary. It's like, baby, I'm not, you know, I'm not coming. I'm not entering your body without you sharing with me and if she goes well I don't really know because many women also raise themselves not touching themselves and this is where your pleasure is your own responsibility if a woman is unable to share with you how she wants to be touched what she needs what type of touch well we can do that next week I'll go into all different types of touch what types of touch then often that could also be from a space where she's been shamed to do that and this is your beautiful gift to her your beautiful gift to her is to is to play, is to experiment, is to have curiosity and information. Now, oh, here's a great analogy. Say you're going to have, say, look, let's even just go to weddings, yeah? If you're going to get married and you're going to spend all of this fucking money on feeding other people, you have, <laughs> you can tell my, my attitude on this stuff, <laughs> The reason I have an attitude around is that people will spend hundreds of thousands of fucking dollars on dresses and feeding other people and venues, and yet they don't have proper conversations with their partner. It's really frightening. They're willing to sign contracts around debt, yet they won't share their fantasies with their partner. To me, that is really horrifying. So that's why. So it's not an attitude about people having weddings and having celebrations about being together in this um in in the projection forever and for for really dedicating themselves to that it's not that i think that's divine union's fucking amazing but people actually sign contracts without it being in divine union because we're bullied into believing that and i'm going to get deeper into that around safety all of that later <laughs> as the weeks come as the months come this is like my juice and coming back to that example and even if you're not in the whole marrying space and you're out there dating, if you're going to put on an event and you have a 10-course menu, you go to the place that's going to be catering and you taste and you try out different foods. Now, you're not going to like everything. You get to say no to stuff. Awesome. That's curiosity and information. It's the same thing with sex curiosity and information you can try a certain touch you can ask you can you need to give feedback you need to share what works and what doesn't work speed up slow down use your whole hand use just fingernails whatever it is it's curiosity and information it's not failure it's not judgment it's not uh an indication that you want the person to leave because a certain type of touch is not working now, staying silent about something that's not working is withholding information and it's actually abusive to do that. 
when you are withholding and you are staying silent about information that is needed for the other person, then that is just not fair. And this is one thing that really trips men up is when they're put in a place, in a position where they are required to work you out as a lover because you're not giving them all of the information they need to win. And they are then required or they are, they're silent so they keep moving forward because in a man's brain that's, a, that's something that needs fixing, that's a problem that needs solving. So we have two things going on here. I just need to drink some water. So two things going on here where if we're not giving information, then the, the, the lover is going to have to keep on moving forward and doing what they think is working and what has worked before. And that's another thing. Never say to anyone, oh, this, no one else has complained. Awesome. Be with those people. But you're not. You're with this person. So it's one thing to understand if someone, if you're saying, oh, no one else has complained or someone else liked it, but you're not with them, you didn't get the call back. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing, <laughs> but it's just like these statements that come out and they come from a place of fear. They come from a place of trying to solve something or push forward because we don't have the courage. When someone's saying something like that, to me, that indicates they don't have the courage just to be uncomfortable and that is the truth of tantra tantra is learning to be comfortable with the uncomfortable so if you're presented with a situation where the touch that you're using or how you're moving forward doesn't seem to be landing it could be because it doesn't work for them or it could be but that that person is not used to advocating for their pleasure and this is where if you're being received with silence it's this is your uh, indication to use your voice and ask and inquire, get curious. It's really important to ask and inquire and be curious. Just as you would as you're learning a new skill at work, if you're having to learn a new program on the computer, if you have decided to, I don't know, take on take on a new account, take it all these things, take on a new sport. You need to learn how to do that. Like if you're going to, if you're a soccer player and you're going to start doing gymnastics, you need to learn a different way to move your body and you need to keep practicing. Same thing with all new lovers. So when we take penetration off the table, then we allow this whole smorgasbord of possibilities, of touch, of play and curiosity is absolutely necessary. So when asking a potential lover or your partner, this is also really, really, it's a really courageous question to ask your current partner whether the type of touch they receive from you truly works for them. Now, if you were in my She the Oracle Masterclass a few weeks ago, or about a month ago now, you would understand that a female's body needs shift throughout her cycle. So something will work one week. It will work one night. Like, fucking hell, it will just work incredibly well. And five, six days later, it's just nothing that she can receive. And there's a very good reason for that, because our bodies are always shifting and changing over a moon cycle. Whereas for a man, your cycle is different. It's a day cycle. We have a monthly cycle. So this is where curiosity is really paramount and where someone's no has nothing to do with you. Your partner's no has anything to do with you is their body doesn't, doesn't respond to that. That's no fault of yours. Curiosity and information, learning to ask really good questions, learning to have a boundary for yourself that you're not going to move forward unless you have the, invita the information, the invitation. Don't move forward unless you have the invitation, but also the information that you need. And if someone is coming from a space of not having explored themselves, not having those boundaries on, then this is your invitation to invite them in. So how about this? 
would this work for you? Are you open? All of these ways to open a, a sentence. Would you be willing? Would you be willing to lay there with a blindfold on? Would you be okay if I started down at your feet? Would it be okay if I massaged your belly? Would it be okay if I moved from your belly to your cock, to your pussy? How does this feel on your left labia? How does this touch feel on your testicles? Does that work? Do you want it harder? Oh, here we go. Here's a fabulous little tip. So I love doing this stuff at restaurants, across the table, in public, <laughs> just because it helps break down uh, barriers and and just really invites honesty. But for uh, a man, if you want to share with your lover how hard to hold your cock, what's a really great way is to grab hold of your lover's wrist and squeeze the wrist at the strength that you like. And this strength could change. Maybe at the beginning you need it soft. And then when, you know, share with you when I start panting and if I'm panting and it's short breaths and I'm moaning, please go harder, like bring more information in. For a woman, show on your man's hand here. Yeah, show here. Let's do this on this side. Where you use your fingertips at the pressure coming down from the middle finger, coming down to this part. We call this as an energetic vulva. Now, when I have touched a lover's hand here at the pressure that I like to be touched, I'm just sitting there going, but I can't, that hardly feels like anything. It's like, yeah, to you, it hardly feels like anything. To me, that's just going to make me shiver. It's going to make me quiver. It's going to bring more arousal. It's going to bring more blood. It's going to allow me to be, you know, and I want you to do it this slow. And I've had the experience where lovers have shared with me how strong they were. And I'd be like, oh, God, I would never have done that without you sharing that with me because that's frightening to me. I'm feeling I'm going to snap it. It. <laughs> Share the ways that you need to be touched. Explore yourself, be fully responsible. And it's okay if you're in a space right now that feels really nerve wracking and frightening. Share that. Have the courage to share. I'm not someone that has spent a lot of time really discovering my own body. Would you be willing to come on this journey with me? Would you be willing to take your time? Would you be willing? to go really slow? Would you be willing to not have penetration at all tonight and just help me discover the different types of touch that I like? Now, once, some, once you've asked a question like that and the person says, yes, now you have, you have cr both created a boundary. So if it feels like they're crossing that boundary, you get to, you get to hold them to that boundary. It's not saying that someone's going to be crossing them out of spite if someone's not used to being held accountable, if someone thinks, you know, in all of our constructs of how sex has happened, if we have a history of, you know, men may have a history, men especially out in the dating scene, of where women don't have orgasms and they keep on hearing, oh, yeah, I, don't, I can't have it, don't worry, I normally don't have an orgasm, you know, with penetration, then they're going to go, oh, okay, so I can keep on penetrating without that. So if you're going to be the first person to do that, then they may, there, there may be some reminding needed to be done that, yeah, penetration is off the table, even if you're really excited and you can place that and you can ask questions. Men do this. But you can do this. I get it. Yeah. So ask follow-up questions. So if you have a beautiful woman saying to you, I want penetration off the table tonight. You can say, okay. So if you're grabbing my hand, does that mean also ask, does that mean fingers or just penis? Does it is it just my cock you don't want to side, or am I allowed to put my fingers inside of you? It's a really great question to ask. Um if you um if you want to clarify that no matter how hot and heavy, are you, you know, maybe you could clarify it's like this is awesome. 
if we're engaging for the next three, four hours and things get really hot and heavy, would there be an opportunity for me to check in with that? Can I, can I ask you again? And she may say, no, I don't, I want you to hold that space where no matter what, no matter how hot and heavy it gets, I don't want penetration tonight or today. Let's get rid of just night, late nighttime days, Let's have full, full day dates. <laughs> That is being responsible for your pleasure and the other person's pleasure because you also need to be free to fully express. When there's a boundary, there's more freedom to fully express because it's kind of like you can get as seductive as you like knowing that there's going to be no penetration and you can fully express yourself without the fear of like it meaning something else. And you could place that in. You could even place it in as a boundary to say, um, I, I want penetration taken off the table. Would you be willing to check in with me? And if if things, if you feel like things are getting really out of hand or feel like things are moving really great, I'm really open to you checking in. I'm going to also check in with myself. And until that check-in happens, it's definitely no penalty. Like everything's still, we're free to fully express, to fully say yes and no to things, knowing that, you know, penetration is off the table. This allows so much safety. It also takes the pressure off for men, the pressure to penetrate. Mm. That's actually going to be next week, talking about the pressure to penetrate. So, lovers, I really hope this is inspiring and juicy and profound. As always, please send your questions in. Any doubts, any things you want me to speak about, please do that. And until then, fill your life with pleasure and advocate for your pleasure because your pleasure is your responsibility. Lover, you have been inside of the Pleasure Studio where all things intimate are up for discussion. Thanks for getting real with me today and I hope you enjoyed this episode. If this conversation sparks something within you, do not hesitate to share it by emailing me via the link below. If you're not already, you can follow my good tush on the social media handles also below and make sure to hit subscribe. Tune in next time for more truths about pleasure and passion. Until then, stay bold, courageous and truthful as you explore your pleasure your way.